Okay. All right, so we're a little bit ahead of where we started yesterday, or let ended up yesterday, but they'll get you the notes. Russia and Ottoman Empire have a bunch of ethnic groups, and Russia is led by Orthodox Christians, the Ottomans are led by Muslim Turks, that's it. Yeah. All right. Repressing the revolutionary spirit. So these ideologies have consequences. Metternich um, will have those three countries, Prussia, Russia, and Austria. So actually not all of an empire of Prussia. So they're going to have Russia, Prussia, and Austria embark on a decades-long crusade against liberties and civil rights. So they form what's called the Holy Alliance in, the 18, in 1815. So in 1815, those three countries and these three leaders will create the Holy Alliance between Prussia, Russia, and Austria. Metternich formed this group, the Holy Alliance, as a support group to like suppress any kind of revolution. So basically, like if Prussia has a crisis one day and there's like a revolution that they have a hard time cracking down on, then Russia and Austria pop in and help suppress it. Wait, so who's against the conservatives? The people are the people, like the regular peoples of their countries are against like conservatives. Even in France and Britain? Or just right, Britain is a whole different story because Britain has some degree of representation. These other places don't. They don't so, have like so just parliaments the and stuff, in Austria. or or Prussia or other parts of the German Confederation or Russia. It could okay, be anyways. So just like smaller ethnic groups. Right, and but it could be it could be white people who white white middle class people who want rights. Well, we It's like all white people. Dude, but some of them are white. They all are. So anyway, uh, the first step uh, was the formation of the Holy Alliance in 1815 by Austria, Prussia, and Russia. Uh, it was a, it was a proposal by Alexander the First, who was the Tsar of Russia. But they would work together repressing any kind of revolutionary outbreak. So like just like. France had a big problem because no one came to their aid, right? It was all dealt with internally. Whereas now, like if Prussia has an outbreak of revolutionary spirit and their government's threatened, then the other two countries pop in and crack, crack down on it, right? It's kind of like a support network, right? If, if you can't handle it, somebody else is going to help handle it for you. So the purpose of the Holy Alliance was to stifle any kind of desire for national independence from these various groups within their countries. And again, it doesn't have to be the ethnic groups. It could be just, you know, middle class white people who wanted to be independent or have rights and stuff, you know, who knows. And so it's not, it's not, maybe, maybe, afraid, maybe that's why I wasn't clear. It's not just independence movement. It's also like rights and democracy, those things too. Okay. It's both. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. A lot of those groups in Austria might want to break off and become independent as well, but that's, so it's a little bit of both. Okay, so like the people in Austria, they, they want liberals because they want to have their own country, but then people in like France and Spain and other countries like that, they want civil Representation, rights. yes, okay. and rights. Okay, and, so that makes sense. Yeah, sorry, I'll, I, I get what you're going for Wait, now. what? I was saying, what confused her was that she thought it was only ethnic groups who, fight, who might be a problem, and I was saying ethnic groups would fight for independence and rights, but you might see white middle class Prussians also fighting for rights, but not independence. Does that make sense? They're fighting for like representation or government recognition of rights. Yeah. Okay. Well, you want to Does that make sense? Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Conservative restoration. So they're going to first use their powers against South Europe. So in the 18-teens and 20s, they're going to first use their powers against South Europe. In 1820, revolutionaries successfully forced the King of Spain and the King of Two Sic Sicilies to establish constitutional monarchies. So Spain and the King of Two Sicilies, which is like South Italy. So Spain and uh, King of Two Sicilies in 1820 both had revolutionaries established constitutional monarchies with things like free press, male suffrage, and other liberal things. But the Holy Alliance said, not on my watch. Oh, and so they show up and they crack down on it. So Spain and two Sicilies did uh, pass liberal things. Well, revolutionaries 
forced them to. It wasn't like they just decided on their own. It was like people in their countries revolted and forced them. So the revolutionaries forced them to have liberalism? Right. And a constitutional monarchy. So there's representation. But the Holy Alliance wasn't going to stand for that, and so they cracked down on this and changed it. So Metternich and the Russians used their alliance to maintain autocratic regimes. Austrian forces invaded Naples in 21 and restored power to the monarch. And then France invaded Spain in 1823 and did the same thing there. So France got in on an action too. So Because France, France was being ruled by the monarch, the Bourbon guy, uh, Louis XVIII. So France invades Spain and then... Um, uh, yeah, they, they invade the uh, two Sicilies and they basically force them both to go back to having a, an absolute monarch. It's all good? Makes sense? Okay. Uh, German Confederation. So the states in the German Confederation were independent and the leaders met regularly to discuss whatever issues they had. They met at something called the Confederation Diet. Remember, the Diet's a term for like an assembly. So they met regularly at a Confederation Diet or an assembly, but it had very little political power. So kind of like the HRE, they met, but they didn't have most a lot of control over what they did. It was mostly still the principalities that had the control. But liberal reformers and university students began to push for change. In this time period, it's always university students. Because college kids go to college and learn stuff. I was going to say, I'm like, oh, this has been going on for a while then. Exactly. This is not new, right? So these university students began protests for a unification of German states around this time period, around the 18 teens and 20s. So young German students and some liberal reformers were pushing for German unification around the 18 teens and 20s. Which, when they push for unification, they're not pushing for unification with, like, just straight-up monarchy, right? They're going to push for, like, constitutional monarchy, basically, right? Having a monarch and having rights and representation. So the German Confederation was booming up, like... All the different, like, 30, there's 38 principalities, remember? So they all would come together. They didn't together. have a lot of control. They, they, they still met. Like, each met. prince or each guy who ran the, the different districts, they ran their own states. It's like, it's like the Articles of Confederation. They met, but the states had all the power. Same thing here. Make sense? Well, like the national government or the national diet didn't really do much or didn't have a lot of authority. Yeah. Right, they work together, but most of the actual governing happens locally at their own local principalities. I know, so what are they discussing? Probably international trade, those kind of things, like how to interact with other countries. They just get together crafting protocol. Right. So the threat of a liberal revolution makes where Austria and Prussia forces them to uh, issue the Carlsbad Decrees. So 1819, Austria and Prussia basically forces them, forces the Germans to issue the Carlsbad Decrees to crack down on this liberal reform movement. So the Carlsbad Decrees, Prussia, force... Yeah, force, basically force the Diet to issue the Carlsbad Decrees to keep German states in check. Because remember that Austria and Prussia are both the two like chief influential German states. Yeah, but why would it... That just doesn't make sense. No, because the guys who are leading Prussia and, Ru and Austria are like absolute conservative monarchists. So they're they're making sure that none of the German states oh, have these ideas. Not against the unification, I guess, just against the fact that they want a constitutional monarchy. Right. Okay. So they require the German states to allow I'm sorry, to outlaw liberal political organizations, police universities, and newspapers. So it required the German states outlaw liberal political organizations, police universities, and newspapers, and create a committee of spies and informers. So the Carlsbad Decrees is all about basically cracking down this liberal reform movement that was happening in the German states and suppressing any liberal ideas. Like, Germany's not opposed to unification, it's, it's just that he wants to do it under what pretense? Uh, There'd be like a monarch, right? And that's it. No, like, parliament or no representation. Do we have to know the specifics of this? 
No, it's just basically like you don't have no liberal organizations. They su they suppress the press as well as like university protests, and they also create a network of spies to hunt down and find those guys and put them in jail, basically. So the Carlsbad decrees are bad, right? Carlsbad, they're bad because they suppress liberal ideas. All right, then lastly, you have the Russian Empire. So Russia also squelched any type of reform, too, in this time period. So Russia was also against any type of reform movement around this time as well. In 1825, 3,000 army officers in Russia who were inspired by liberal ideas staged a protest against the Tsar. 3,000 army officers in 1825 staged a protest against the new Tsar. Basically, try to strike with the iron's hot. New Tsar, we're inspired by everything else that's been happening in Europe. Let's protest and hopefully get some little reforms out of it. But loyal people in the army of the Tsar put down the revolt. Or the, I shouldn't say revolt, protest. It wasn't really a revolt, it was a protest. So loyals in the army to the uh, Tsar put down the protest and killed 60 people. The leaders were publicly hanged, and then the rest were sent to Siberia. Oh. Yeah. Very well. Yeah, exactly. It would be better if you didn't have this. Right. So don't do this. Right. That's the message you're trying to send. So the new czar wasn't going to be like you know pushed around. Right. The new czar is going to crack down and be like, hey, I'm in charge, not you. Oh right. So loyals put down the protest, killing 60. Leaders are executed by being publicly hanged. The rest sent to Siberia. Then Russia and Central Europe used censorship, military, secret police, imprisonment, execution, all to suppress liberal reform. So all these Central and Eastern countries, these big empires, Russia, Prussia, Austria, Ottoman Empire, they're all using censorship and military and secret police and spies and imprisonment and execution all as a message and a warning to, like, you don't try liberal reforms. Things gonna happen next then. Right. Which is like the, the bad kid, right? You're I'm gonna ground you more. Well he's just you know, they just rebel more, right? I like I never got that. It's like how about a fair government that like I know, helps people to get No Because you don't know what to do with it when you have that power, right? Wait, so I don't understand why it's just like We're gonna stop the first video.